He's threatened me, Frank Dukes. He's threatened me bodily harm. That is the worst thing he ever did. Frank's lies are this kind. I flapped my wings so hard, my hands, that I levitated up and I landed on the moon. Hey guys, got a really cool video for you today. Could end up being a series, we'll see how that plays out, but basically I call it Destroy or Defend Frank Dukes. In it, my guests are Sifu Allen Goldberg, who's highly respected in the martial arts community, and also legendary kickboxer Don the Dragon Wilson, who's obviously also highly respected in the martial arts community. We'll just say that they're not exactly the biggest fans of Frank Dukes, and they're going to tell you why. I myself am more neutral and even go out of my way to try to defend Frank Dukes because I want to try to keep this video at like at least a little more balanced and a little more fair. But with that said, any pro Dukesers out there, if you want to defend them, if you've trained with them and you could vouch for them, or even Frank Dukes yourself, himself, you're more than welcome to come on the channel and we could discuss things, even give this video a rebuttal. So we'll see how that plays out. But anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribing, and sharing the video. And one last thing, if you want to smell amazing, I could get you a huge discount on Black Belt Fragrances, Cologne or Perfume, only 35 bucks. And until the end of the year, I'm going to eat the shipping. So that's going to save you 5 or 10 bucks. You're going to smell amazing at a great discount. Could make a great gift for yourself, friend, or a loved one. All information linked in the description below. And with that said... Let's get on to this discussion. Guys, I'm, I'm so happy, Ron. You know this is the most anticipated show that's ever been on the internet. <laughs> it's a big one, man. I'm excited. I know Frank Dukes must be excited. <laughs> Don's well, got to be excited. <laughs> I, I didn't tell Don this. I haven't spoken since the other day with Don, but I go on. Uh, Sheldon Lennox sent, sent, sent to me Frank's post about me <clears throat> on Twitter. So I go to the post and I open it up and he's there and he's bad mouthing me and calling me a bully and all these things, whatever. So I answered him back for about a half hour. I called him everything in the book. I told him all the truths. I put pictures up of him, whatever. All of a sudden this morning I found that I was blocked, blocked. And, but he hasn't put anything else up. So okay. we left it at that and we laughed at it. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I understand because uh, I was there in Vegas when there was kind of a problem between what Frank was claiming. His, I, I guess it was uh, a friend of Frank's actually uh, uh, was claiming something about Alan. And I realized that it's gotten personal between Alan and Frank. And uh, my, my situation with Frank is nothing personal. I don't even know the guy. I, I only see him at events. And... Um, you know, one time Bill Wallace and I and Frank were signing autographs in Tampa, Florida. And uh, that, that's about the most time I spent with Frank because he was sitting right next to me. So, you know, I, I, I asked him some questions about his background that, that he had said. And it, it was so, so unbelievable that uh, Bill Wallace, I, was, I actually was asking Frank just to tease Bill Wallace. Right, right. <laughs> because he was listening to Frank. And he was about to explode because Frank was talking so much crazy. Yeah. I, I, I mean, there are people who defend him, Alan, by saying uh, that he's mentally ill. Well, that's what it is, is he's got a yeah. mental illness. I, I just want to... We should feel sorry for him. But no. Frank is, is dangerous to the martial art community. Yes. And people and, like Frank. And other people. And other people, Don. Well, that's what I'm... I just in general, we, lying is wrong. And I'm not the first person who said this. I mean, if you look at the Bible, I'm not, I don't know how religious anybody is, but it's one of the 10 things you're not supposed to do is lying. Let me, let, me just, let me just say something for the audience to know. And there was a word that came up, integrity, okay? And it came up about Dave. And the guy, Frank Duke, said Dave has no integrity. Well, I don't know Dave Long, but I feel that this man does have integrity. Thank you. I do appreciate his honesty. Well, that's the go. pot calling the kettle black. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, thank you. But I also say Don the Dragon has integrity. Okay. And pound for pound, he was one of the best fighters that I've ever seen in my life. Go online, watch his fights, and then watch Frank Dukes' fight. Oh, 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 shit. There are no fights with Frank Dukes. That's right. I forgot. Because but they were a secret. They, it was so secret. There are a lot of, of Don the Dragon. They didn't. They haven't made a movie about my fight career. It's so secret. It's the only competition they've made a movie about. This. It's ridiculous. It's just. Well, let, let me just. It, it is me, interesting. In all fairness, 
all fairness, I have to read off the thing about integrity and what has been vetted about Frank Duke and what has been the honest truth of everything he says and so forth. So this is what it all comes out to. Just a big X. Okay. Nothing. Everything this guy says is full of shit. There you go. I said it. Let, let me ask you guys this just to start off. So I think the first time anybody's heard of Frank Dukes was probably in 1980 with that Black Belt Magazine article. But the vast majority right. of us, you know, when Bloodsport came out, I believe in like what, 88 or 89, you know, obviously based on uh, Frank Dukes' true story. So when did you guys first hear about Frank Dukes? Was it back before the movie or was it because of the movie? Well, before, oh, the, movie, the, movie. Well, before the movie, I've heard things about it. Okay. Because he was he was chasing after uh, Stephen Hayes for years. And Stephen is one of my dear friends. Don will tell you, we all go out, we party, we drink, we have a good time, we have dinner. Stephen Hayes is one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. Okay. And Frank Dukes has attacked him for years, mm. calling himself the first American ninja. And me, Stephen Hayes has been doing it when Frank was in diapers. But that's another story. But uh, the integrity that, that people have that, that stay away from him is immense because they stay away from him and they can't get involved with it. And whatever, you know, I, I've heard out of Frank's mouth is a complete lie. It stinks. By the way, get black belt cologne because it really works well too. Yeah. Frank, buy a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but uh, I heard of him before. Uh, something privy that I was also on the board of directors for Black Belt Magazine. I was on for the special events uh, committee. So I knew everyone at Black Belt. I knew the story behind the story that they wrote. And Frank Dukes is the only article that was published that had a disclaimer. Yeah, that is yeah. an interesting disclaimer. But here's a question for you, Alan. Why hasn't Black Belt Magazine ever retracted that story? Well, the editor, the, well, the publisher was lost his job, number one. Okay. I had a dear friend and that came in and was the, was the publisher for years, okay? This girl named Cheryl Angel Hall, wonderful girl, uh, did a great job and whatever else. And they left it alone, really, because they didn't want to give him any more publicity, mm. okay? And they found that they were duped. They thought they were being duped. That's why they put disclaimer. Never before, was it, and I don't mean a little thing, they put a nice square box on the bottom of the article with a disclaimer in. Why would they do that? So uh, all these people to protect that, lawsuits. Uh, yeah, but they knew the story didn't sound right. Well, That's the problem. Why, why do you they think they would that. publish it in the first place, Alan? Because this publisher that was involved in that, and this is only speculatory, I don't know for sure, was in Frank's pocket. Hmm. Could have been money, could have been influence, I don't know. But they published the article because the publisher has full say of everything. Yeah. You know, I'm a publisher magazine. I make decide what's going in a magazine and not going in a magazine. OK. And that's as simple as it is. So a story came up on your desk and it sounded so amazing. It had to be printed. It sounded great. But as they went along, they put this disclaimer in it because it just didn't make any goddamn sense. Now, the you reason asked um, why they didn't have a they did have a disclaimer. But you asked why they would print something like that. It's a great story. It is. I mean, they turned into a good movie. You know, a bunch of martial arts. Imagine this. Well, it's, it's the basically Enter the Dragon, right? Yeah, 100%. Great martial artists, and they go to this secret place, Hans Island, and they fight. And sometimes people die, sometimes they don't. You know, you can knock the guy out, I guess, and not have to kill him. So basically, that that's just, your, he, he basically rehashed Enter the Dragon and just kind of adjusted it so it sounded more realistic. 100%. And, and it's, I said that. That's always. and that what isn't Enter the Dragon one of the all time highest grossing? I think it's over a hundred million. It's gotta be, yep. yeah. yeah. You know, and it yeah. was made for nickels and dimes in those days. You know, I mean, right. I, I, I'm sure it was. Made where it didn't have a budget of like fifty million or something. Maybe you know, a, a million dollars. You know, yeah, low budget. That's definitely a million too much. But you know, yeah. Sheldon Lynch, who is the writer of the movie, who still gets the residuals and still gets everything, Frank still tells people that he owns the movie. OK, I just had an argument with his manager the other day about this. The guy we talked about, Dave, mm. uh, and he said he still gets residuals. Does not exist. Sheldon said he has nothing to do with the movie. He what paid for his idea 
and Sheldon wrote the movie. And then Sheldon's words are, he wrote the movie, he put stuff in the movie, and Frank adopted it to his life. Okay? Other things that were in the movie. And the real truth of the matter that, you know, this man says things and they're not traceable. Okay? Yeah. Here, here's a question for you real quick, guys, though. So the Bloodsport movie, taken out you know, the Frank Deuce claims that it's real, the movie by itself and the influence it had on the martial arts community. Excellent. What do you guys think about that? Are do you like that or do you yeah. just wish it never was created? No, oh, I, no, like no it. I like it. I like okay. it. It was good for martial arts. And, and it's 100%. a good movie. I, I like Van Damme's acting. You know, yep. I got nothing wrong with, 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 with the entertainment aspect of it. Very I'm glad. <laughs> I love that Listen, movie. My first movie was called Blood Fist. That wasn't a coincidence. Yeah, it's a little, little Blood rip off, Sport right? was so popular. Yeah, so Roger Corman did a movie similar. You could possibly say that, <laughs> that I owe my career, the start of it, for sure, to Blood Sport. Which so was you owe Frank Duke's gratitude in a way. Yeah, but but, but, but Don, Don, you're your own person. You would have you would have made it one way or another. I'm sorry. Well, you, look, know. Look, look, look. you know, I was going to be out here and struggle Catalyst, and try to it. get an actor. But the thing is, it facilitated my career. So I, I have nothing but good feelings about what it is he ended up creating mm. uh, through his lies, of course. But, you know, in Hollywood, there's many movies I've, I've done lies. well with. <laughs> many movies I've done well with. And screenwriters admit they just made them up. Right? They, they don't say, well, this was a real story. <laughs> Ring of Fire really happened or, um, you know, Out for Blood is, is based on a real... People don't do that. They, they... My problem with this whole thing is it's deception, it's lies, it's uh, what's stolen valor. Because when you run around telling your people you're Thank 300 you. and 0, the actual fighters who, like Bill Wallace, I believe he was 22 and 0. That's mm -hmm. still a phenomenal record, you know, in great <laughs> professional life, record. Right. right, because his first fight, remember, he was in the championships. So he had 22 title defenses. They were title mm -hmm. fights for Bill. Right. So I respect all the guys who built up sport martial arts until it became UFC, MMA. Uh, you know, I'm, well, I'm not too old because I may have one more fight, guys. <laughs> you got to do but, a video you know, on that um, later, yeah. Believe it or not, believe it or not. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll call you up. David and give you the exclusive first announce when the contract's signed. Boy, I can't wait till that feature video happens, guys. Let me know in the comments, by the way, would you love to see Don the Dragon Wilson back in the ring? But one thing I have to say for your audience, I have signed letters by nine people that Frank asked to make letters up that they saw him in the Kumite. Some very high-ranking people. You mean somebody witnessed the Kumite? And they all said no. They wouldn't lie for Frank. That's but a simple. How can you have a secret event where people have spectators? Why would you have to go to li have people lie for you? Yeah, yeah. Well, but I, I just. But listen, th there's an interview he gives where Bruce Lee heard about a 16 year old <laughs> kid that was faster than he was, so he had to meet Dukes and a guy. Frank calls him a Warner Brothers executive. No, he was he worked in the publicity department of Warner Brothers at one time. The guy says, um, I first heard of Frank Duke's na name when Bruce Lee came to me while I was at Warner Brothers at and 15. said he had heard the reputation of a 16-year-old kid that was faster than him. So he wanted me to find him so he could meet him. And tr they could tr and then, and, and then uh, I believe Frank says they trained together. And Bruce Lee is going to look up a 16-year-old kid. Frank Duke's, it's just mind-boggling. Bruce Lee wants to learn from him when he was 16 years old. It, and can I say something about that? Even fit. Can you I know, say he, something about that? That the guy claimed that Frank was 250 pounds, solid muscle, so on, so on, so forth. When Frank was 19, he was 190 pounds. So well, he wasn't even 19 at that age. And that's when, when he supposedly won the was, Kumite in 75. At but 90. I'm going to show you something. You see that photo? Yeah, that was Frank. That was Frank Dukes at 19 years old. Okay, so he was no 250 pounds. So of solid muscle, I'm that. sure he claims. I'm, I'm sure he claims it's solid muscle. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'll give you another fight. He said he had 
with Victor Moore. And I'm telling you, David, I, I really respect you because when this show was going on, we were talking about bringing Victor Moore on and Sky Benson and a few other people. And I said, no problem. But they all said, no. Okay, why did they say no? They wanted no part of what was taken. And they, I've been told things personally by these guys. Frank Dukes, we have it on tape, and you might have saw the video, says he fought Victor Moore twice. Well, I have Victor Moore with witnesses on the phone and tape that Victor Moore said, now nah, we were kidding around, we did it, we posed a little, but we never fought. And I said to Victor, you're going to ruin your reputation if you ever admit that. And Victor Moore says, Alan, I swear I never fought the man. And I had witnesses on the phone and audio tape. Interesting. And the guy that uh, was going to get me this, and I don't know if he still will or not, if we could get Vic Moore and Sky Benson, uh, was a guy uh, named Timothy Bill. And I bring that up real quick. I, I know your feelings about oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know Tim. Timothy. So you, Tim. Yeah, because Don, he had told me that he manages you. Well, no, you know what? This is in Hollywood. Here's how he does. He's, he's managed me into deals. If he brings a right. deal to me, Okay. He can manage the deal because I'm not a manager. I stuff anyway, you know, for 35 years, I, I never read a, a, a contract. My agent and my business manager and my personal attorney and all, all, other people handle all that crap. I've never even, I read my first contract about two months ago for a movie because my agent died, unfortunately. Right. Yeah, right. I've had him since 85. Ray, Ray Cavallari died uh, two months, two, three months ago. And anyway, um, uh, the, the, these, um, uh, claims of, of Dukes, the only pur purpose I would even want to be here is not because anything to do with the entertainment business. It's, it's just that lying is wrong in the martial arts. And when I stand next to him at events and things, afterwards, I, I feel guilty that I didn't, I did that because I what? endorsed him. People said, oh, right. Don Wilson what? and Frank Dukes were signing autographs. Don obviously respects him and whatever. Right. So that's why I, I, I'm on this thing is, is not for any reason other than um, I want people to realize that, uh, you know, uh, my presence at an event that Frank is getting an award at is right. not my endorsement of he's the real deal. But Dave, I, I have to say something to the audience, you know, they want to know why me and Don are doing this interview. Yeah, exactly. And the truth is really because we're trying to protect the public. Nothing this man has said. You saw the photo I showed you? That was a military picture of him wearing the Congressional Medal of Honor and other, other medals. There are military guys that want to kill him for that. Then he says it was a Halloween costume. But uh, Sheldon Lennox would tell you that that photo was on his wife's mantle in his mother and father's house framed above the fireplace. Why would you put a Halloween costume up there? That's, that don't yeah, make any that, that, goddamn sense. Point. Yeah, Sheldon did tell me that. Back when I first knew him, and I knew his first wife, April, and I went to the home of April's parents a few times. Okay, I, like I said, I was good buddies with them many years ago. Well, they had that photo with him in the uniform with the medals hanging up in their living room, sort of in a place of honor in their living room. <laughs> and so obviously they believed that this was all real, that he really had won all these medals for valor. Um, they would not have had a photo of their son-in-law hanging up in their living room um, so that they could say, oh yeah, here's our son-in-law at a, at a Halloween costume party. Yeah, that would be ridiculous. No, no, but what's ridiculous is that he really did say that he won all these medals. And uh, uh, nowadays he says that uh, uh, his, his enemies were just trying to, uh, uh, just trying to embarrass him. He went off, he's threatened me, Frank Dukes. He's threatened me bodily harm. That is the worst thing he ever did, okay? Mm -hmm. He's also threatened other women. Well, that's illegal. That, that's not legal. You can't uh, do that legally. You, you can't go around. I have it in writing, too. So yeah. whatever. But he's also threatened other women. He's threatened other men. And he calls us bullies when this guy's threatened people his whole career, including Stephen Hayes, including myself, including Ronald Duncan, many, many people over the years. No, real well, I, don't consider, I don't consider anything we're doing bad-mouthing him. And David's been, you, you are more than fair with everybody you give them i'm trying to be as, as much leeway as, as an interviewer as much leeway 
as you possibly can without endorsing them, without saying, you know what, Frank Dukes, uh, he, he, he is 300 and 0. But you just say, well, <laughs> these are his claims, and which is the same. It, 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 you, you should do that. You, you shouldn't say, oh, I'm on Don's side or Alan's. It, no. The, and speaking of that, real quick. Yeah. Speaking of that, real quick, Frank Dukes. Show if you can get him. If you you are welcome them. anytime on the show. There's an open invite. Yes. I'm pretty sure you know that. And then anyone that wants to defend you, either Vic Moore, Sky Benson. I talked to your buddy Francisco from Mexico, Shihan Francisco Diaz. So, and I already invited him. He's free to come on anytime. So anybody that wants to defend Dukes is more than free. And Dukes himself, I would love to have him on the show. I put down yeah. that we would take any rebuttals from anybody. But here's the point. Talking about the Black Dragons, he says he's involved with whatever. Uh, there's a gentleman named Bill Aguilar that owns the Black Dragons that was inherited from Count Dante and his father. He has all the paperwork and records and everything. Frank Dukes, Senzo Tanaka, Shida Kim, any of those guys, Day, all those guys never existed in the Black Dragons under, under um, Count Dante. So that's another goddamn story he tells. So what people don't realize, the guy just lies after lies after lies. The organization they're in is a new organization that was put together in like 1989, not the original one from back in the 60s. And there is proof of that. Writing, photos, everything. Dukes never existed in the Black Dragons. But are you saying the Black Dragons was something legit that Count Dante ran, though? Yes. Oh, 100%. Really? Okay, yep, 100%. Even though there's a lot of controversy about him, the man was a nut. The man was crazy, and he would go out and fight anywhere, any place, any time. And Frank Dukes was not part of that. Hmm. Okay? And, you know, I know you, you know the story. I know you wanted to ask me about the $50,000 me and a group of people put up about Frank Dukes. Oh, of course. <laughs> we got to talk about ahead, that. I'm thinking ahead of you. Okay? Yeah. For the public. We, people are tired of Frank Dukes' lies and crap. And I have pages full of stuff. Proven. Everything we say is vetted and proven. Okay? Dana Stamos, the lady you mentioned from USA Dojo, is an investigative reporter like no one he ever met. She spoke to the Navy SEALs that did things with him and everything. So Frank went off, and Frank admitted to a buddy of mine, Jeff Langdon, which you know, mm -hmm. back in the 80s, that the record that was at the end of the movie was false. It was fake was put on for the movie to sell tickets. Mm -hmm. Jeff Langdon will go to a quarter of Lawrence when it was in a Chinese restaurant, him and Frank sitting there. And he told Jeff that. Okay. So we all went off and we got $50,000 together between us. We put it in a, a, a say, you know, a scripture that we're all going to put, put the money up and we put it out for three months. Frank Dukes, please let us know where is your proof. Send us a video. Anyone out there, of the thousands of people that would have fought in the Comité. Hey, he said his videos have been stolen, so he can't produce them anymore. Well, Here's some, a but rebuttal there, there are other that, people, though, though. real quick, Alan. And I, and I got this from uh, having a conversation with Francisco over Facebook. You know, uh, So he, he said he had heard something about that reward offered by Goldberg, uh, with, which he says, which once again proves that you seek at all costs to destroy Dukes. No, he threatened <laughs> we'll me. We'll talk about that, but he here's threatened the rebuttal. Me. Here's a rebuttal. So Francisco says, and again, this is going from obviously a very pro Duke's perspective. Right. Uh, you have to understand the context. The people who participated in the Kumite were not a group of athletes in the Olympic Games. This was something clandestine where they Bullshit. fought anonymously. <laughs> Dukes dared to speak out about it and it cost him dearly. So he's kind of like, do you think anybody else would come out and talk about it? Because look how it kind of destroyed Frank Dukes's reputation in a lot of ways. Frank, uh, Francisco, stop I drinking have the a secret event and all these stop people drinking show the Kool Aid. Stop, stop drinking guys, what it is. I'm going to tell you the about, truth. We're talking about something that doesn't make any sense at all. How we can put you up have $50,000? Right. We put up $50,000. We left it for three months. There were no rules, no regulations. We wanted a phone call. Okay. I got a phone call from a name, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hydrix. And the guy got me on the phone and the guy checked me out with all Bill Wallace and a lot of Benny the Jet and all these people. And the guy, they all said, no, Alan's a good guy. Frank has the one that has the problem. Well, the guy got on the phone with me. And now at this time and day, that me and guy are very good friends. Okay. 
because what he told me at the end of it when we had a little rebuttal, he said, I can't lie. He goes, Frank Dukes put me up to it. Frank's a lion son of a bitch. He goes, he never fought in the Kumite. And this is Frank's one of his best friends. Interesting. There you go. Real so, quick, Alan. One person um, now, when, when you say like the motivation behind this, uh, you know, I guess in a way to uh, clear the air with Dukes and, and, and prove that, you know, he has lied about a lot of things is to protect the public. Like in what way, though? You mean so people don't join Dukes Rio or, or protect them in yeah, a different but way? Well, the point about it, there's not one student that he has that who's up there now in rank and whatever it is. That was his student. They came from other people and he adopted them. He just did it with a guy up in, uh, I, I think it's California. I don't know the guy's name. Oh, you're my student, whatever. But the guy was talented already. Okay. And even Sky Benson will say, I don't want to say nothing. Well, but let me give you Francisco's story real quick because he's a legit student. He's got a he's got a and he was student. not with Dukes originally. He came from someone guys, else. Guys, well, guys, so guys, real quick, real think quick, of it this way. Here's the way to, 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 to think of this e event that's going on, which is we've got a guy who becomes famous. What if a medical doctor Thank becomes you. as famous as Dukes is and starts giving medical advice uh, and and telling you? Oh, you got pain in your heart. Don't worry about that. It'll go away in two weeks. Okay, now what's your problem? What? It's it's dangerous for somebody to get this to give out advice about it. What, you one guy said, uh, "What if it was powerlifting in the Olympics?" And mm -hmm. a guy's not a powerlifter. He's teaching people. There's ways you can teach that you can pull your, you can destroy your back, so or you can destroy your knees. Don, it's, are you kind of saying Frank should not be teaching people martial arts? No, he shouldn't that, be. You, you don't no, think you he don't, shouldn't be no. saying the lies that he's saying? Because I, I can't say that, that every black belt that owns a karate school in America or right. anywhere is qualified. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying what's drawing you to um, Frank the Van Dam, is Van his Dam reputation Dam. of being the great blood sport. Like if, if I was <laughs> – look, if I was a fighter – if I was a fighter, I was a fighter. But, but when I was 18, 19, 20, and I didn't know anybody, and I heard, oh, the, the, you know, the, the, there's this guy, Frank Dukes, who is a great fighter. Now, if I see Chuck Norris with him at events, I see Joe Lewis, I see real fighters that I respect, Benny Gurkitas, like I've done with Frank Dukes, mm -hmm. I, think, I think he's real. I, that adds sure. to his, quote, right. credibility. So, I, for me, I might pay him $500 for six weeks of lessons. And I would learn a bunch of crap. No, and, I'm and not here's saying the truth. I know the man's background. All right. He was a green belt in judo and a green belt in taekwondo. He has a video that we have up on the uh, USA Dojo, go ju, uh, dojo that says, I am a self taught martial artist. What yeah. happened to Tanaka? Yeah, because he would have, listen, he would have a. What happened to the six years of Tanaka? He would have an instructor that David would have on the show right now. Right? To get your black belt. You got to you get, get your black from your black belt. Your first black belt is given to you by somebody. Well, right. he's got a dead guy, Tanaka or whatever that trained him. Which is yeah. bullshit. Tanaka is like John John Smith. That's what Tanaka. Well, he's is. from James Bond. Is what, what right. People, I've heard people say, "Hey, isn't that the guy from James Bond movies?" Right. But see now, here here's the interesting thing though, because I have heard from people that. You know, let, let, let's just try to take away like some of the stuff Duke said and just focus on like the martial arts because it is possible, even if he made up, you know, somebody that trained him, for example, it is possible that through his reading and maybe self-exploration okay. and watching other people picking things up, he could very well be a very legit martial artist who does have like knowledge and wisdom and technique that he can impart on people. That that could actually be right. legit. So if I pay him $500... Belt. I may not get ripped off. I might actually learn something very useful. Brown belt listen, material. Listen, listen. I believe brown in martial belt arts. Brown belt material. I watch the seminars. The man, Alan, he Alan. sucks. Alan, Alan brown belt arts. in what, though? Because that could mean different things depending on, like, the discipline. So brown belt is not very brown belt, or... period. Guys, guys, martial I arts is, brown is, a potentially, brown is a potentially dangerous activity to, to just have anybody teaching. Now, if being a concert pianist, you can go watch it. You can own a piano and, and every morning get in there and just kind of play, run the things back and forth, do exercises. But you can't teach somebody to be a concert pianist if you don't know how to play the piano. 
he can't teach people to defend themselves if he's not trained to do it himself. I, mean, I got, let me tell you, we have to have a second show because I can give you so much information that was investigated about his Navy SEAL book shit that they didn't even use anything in the book that he did. Yeah, but he was so undercover, only the president knew what he was doing. So he got a secret Medal of Honor. And that, I, I will say this. Um, Colonel Toomey said it never happened. I, I will say this, though, about the Kumite. The secret event, the only thing that really throws me off about that, that I couldn't even really try to defend, is the trophy. Like, it. if no one's supposed to talk about it or know about it, but I guess he it, got right. permission to for that Black Belt Magazine article, only him. But why would they give him that big trophy that he could put on his mantle? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Announcing to the world. Hey, I'm going to show you. Let me, let That's me the only thing that throws me off. And why is he the only, guy, lie. the only guy in the whole world with the permission to talk about the event? Yeah. That's why he says no. none of his opponents will talk about it because they don't have permission. Let you me wanna, ask you, you this, guys. That he, he must have fought. What did they say? You know, he knocked out 50 guys in a row. So he fought yeah, like 10,000 yeah. people competing in the event. The right. event's going on in the Bahamas, he claimed to me. And he, he tells people now it was in the Bahamas. I'm from Florida. I never martial artists in the Bahamas. Isn't that, you and, know, like, and, and I check with people from the government. That never happened from Bahamas. Of course I know not. People no let, me, let me show you something. The Bahamas. You can see that online. You see that photo? That's a cool picture. <laughs> okay. That comes from a movie set. And he has that in the book that he made, The Secret Man. Do you know what movie that was? Uh, I think it was Sheldon's movie. Sheldon, Sheldon did well, one. He had a different picture. He had a different picture, um, you know, where he's holding that pistol. For, for, for but the listen, movie. how many, CIA, how many secret one. special forces CIA guys shoot headshots, pose with weapons and stuff? The, for the, for, I'm, I'm going to give you some investigation. While they're doing secret missions. I'm going to give you an investigation. That photo came from Sheldon's movie. The of second course. photo, Sheldon is standing there, okay, of in course. the photo that he used. See, but uh, you never go into the jungle with a fake M16. That's a fake M16. You never go in the jungle in military with a silver pistol. You'll get Alan, yourself you killed. you never take a picture of yourself when you're doing right. covert operations. <laughs> and you never use a Radio Shack radio. <laughs> <laughs> radio Shack. Well, look, 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 guys, we, we can be, beat our heads against the wall. Frank's claims are ridiculous. They're not even uh, – I see David trying to give him as much leeway as he possibly can that maybe some of this stuff is true. There, it could possibly be true. But, yeah, but I don't believe it. not. Because I don't it doesn't believe make it. logical sense. It's like if I said I yeah, he was a Marine hands, for 130 days. I That's clapped it. my hands so hard that I levitated up a foot off the ground. That you'd find that hard to believe. But Frank's lies are this kind. I flapped my wings so hard, my hands, that I levitated up and I landed on the moon. <laughs> that, Frank is the, and, 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 Frank and is the king. Frank is the king. We're trying to say no. Uh, Don Pitton, um uh, Frank couldn't have overcome the gravity. No, you know what? The, the, there's no error up there. Frank couldn't have held, held his breath that long. We right. are trying to decipher and make sense of a totally ridiculous, over-the-top... Any real fighter knows this. If you say, I've got uh, uh, you know, 30 knockouts in a row, that is impressive. 30 knockouts. Of course, I would then say, who did you fight? Fight. I asked that now, him now, many times. He never Frank gave me a name. He doesn't say 30 knockouts. He says 50 all in the first round and total of 300 fights. All his his exaggeration, because he's he's not a real fighter. He doesn't know that what he says is ridiculous. Right, exactly. But it, you know it, the it, one it, thing about him? He's the king of spin. If you wrote something about him, you say, well, that's not me because it's not a capital D in front of my name. It's a, it's a small case. That's not me. I don't know. It must be someone else. He's the king of spin. He will take things like that and change it. That well, let me ask you this, guy. Let me ask you this, guys. He's, he, he fought this in this Kumite. He claims Benny Urquidez has entered, but they wouldn't allow him. Bullcrap. Benny said no. He wasn't good. In, you know, no, they said he said that because he was Mexican. 
Yeah. Frank got into this event. Now, in the days that Frank compete would have competed if he was a competitor, we only we, we, we had kickboxing, but he didn't obviously didn't choose to do that. But we had point fighting, right? Right. So to get in the event, he had to be a his experience as a fighter was point fighting. Now you go from point fighting to winning this Kumite. He's going to fight the greatest fighters in the world, right? Ben right. Urquidez couldn't get in. Benny Urquidez could not get accepted. So they're all, of course, a level of, according to Frank, above uh, Ben. I, guys, I got. I have to run because I have to do something very apparently. I have to pick my grandson up. But if we do another show, I have another two pages of shit on Frank. What, one quick nice rebuttal, game. Alan. One quick rebuttal. Uh, yep. About that book in the photograph, you know, Sean Lennish talked about. So this is from Francisco. Uh, Although Secret Man is considered an autobiography of Frank Dukes, much of the bad work in that book was a responsibility of the publisher who wrote the wrong things, modified parts of the book, and wrote captions without asking the context of the photos. And if anyone believes that, drink more Kool-Aid. That's all bullshit, especially with Frank Dukes' ego. And his, his narcissistic way, he would never let a book to be published like that. The guy's so full of crap, and they pulled that book off the market after one week. Because the military, Frank has been investigated by military people, the FBI, and things like that for claiming the Congressional of Honor and other things. This guy is so full of crap, he still has brown ears. I hate to tell you, because we proved well, so you know, many I things. Think, that, I that, think he's so ridiculous that the law enforcement and government agencies and even the military people they don't take them serious i don't think no they don't and i'm going to tell we, you a story we, that we nobody knows to, except a handful don might remember this i gotta run after this but don may remember this do you know he had a contract to kill stephen hayes that's crazy well that's okay. dangerous that, that becomes and you know, that stephen hayes got thing, approached yeah. by detectives on it so well, well, that's another story for another Yeah, that's time. a clip. Guys, I got to run. I love you all. Later. Thank you for the respect. And I got so much more to say if you want to do a second show. Yeah, I'll have to have you back on, of course, Alan. But yeah, go ahead and uh, get your grandson. You know? Bye, Alan. Do it, man. That's bye, my Alan. life. Let, let right, me guys, ask you one more thing, Don, if you got a little bit of time. <laughs>